This part four of the playlist discusses the fundamental theorem. First we need to discuss the boundary of a manifold. I'll first state the theorem and then give some examples. Theorem. The boundary of an m-dimensional manifold m is an m minus 1 dimensional manifold denoted with the partial sign again m. And here are the examples. First the m equals 3 case. I have a solid ball, a three-dimensional manifold m, and its boundary is its surface, a sphere, which is a two-dimensional manifold. Here is the m equals 2 case. This time the manifold is a hemisphere, m, and its boundary is a circle, which is a one-dimensional manifold. And finally, here's the m equals 1 case. The manifold is a curve. Its boundary consists of its end points, and we consider points, individual points, to be zero-dimensional manifolds. Before introducing the fundamental theorem of geometric calculus, I'd like to have a look at the three important vector calculus integral theorems, and here they are. Now, they look quite different, but there are some similarities. On the left side, I have an integral over a manifold, and inside of the integral, I have some sort of a derivative of a function. On the right side, I have the function itself, f and phi, a scalar valued function, and I'm integrating over the boundary of the manifold on the left. S, the surface S, is the boundary of the manifold V. C, is the boundary of the manifold S, and one considers the integral over the boundary points of a curve to be the difference of the values of the function at the two endpoints. There it is, the fundamental theorem of geometric calculus. Let's see what the theorem says. It equates two directed integrals, one over a manifold and one over the boundary of the manifold. The directed integral on the left is that of the vector derivative of a multivector valued function defined on the manifold. On the right, we have the directed integral of the function itself. Notice that the three previous parts of this playlist provide essential concepts for the formulation of this theorem. In the next several slides, we'll see that despite the, despite the simplicity of the statement of the theorem, it has amazing power and has many powerful corollaries. I'll let you have a look at it before I move to the next slide. The first corollaries that we'll discuss are generalizations of the divergence theorem and Stokes' theorem, or as I prefer to call it, the curl theorem. First, the divergence theorem. Here is the standard statement in R3. Here is the corollary. It starts with an m-dimensional manifold and Rm 
Here V is a three-dimensional manifold, a solid, in R3. N is the unit normal to the boundary of M. Recall that this d sigma was a vector orthogonal to S, and that orthogonality survives as this vector N. Notice that these integrals are not directed integrals, but ordinary multiple integrals. X is not bold here, which indicates that this is a, as I say, a, a standard multiple integral, as is uh, this. Curl theorem. Here is the standard formula for it in R3. And here is the generalization. An m minus 1 vector field on an m dimensional manifold. f is a 1 vector, that is to say a vector field, on a 2 dimensional manifold s. The generalization then of this formula is this. Both generalizations follow from the fundamental theorem by some fairly simple manipulations. Let's see what the fundamental theorem has to say about, G about complex analysis. According to Hestonis and Sobchik, geometric calculus fully integrates complex analysis and real analysis into a single subject. Let's see some of why that's so. Here's the definition of an analytic function on a manifold. f is some multi-vector valued function on the manifold, and it's called analytic if its vector derivative is zero. Now this truly is a generalization of the ordinary definition of an analytic function in a plane because in a plane, this condition, this analyticity condition, is exactly the same as saying that the function satisfies the Cauchy-Riemann equations, which are equivalent to f being an analytic function. There's a bit of a peculiarity in that there's no function called the derivative of f. This is a statement of Cauchy's integral theorem in standard complex variable theory. f is an analytic function in some region, and if that's the case, then the integral of the function around a closed curve is zero. Here is its generalization to manifolds. If f is an analytic function, on an m-dimensional manifold m, then the integral of f around the boundary, the directed integral of f around the boundary, is zero. And for the proof, we need only write the fundamental theorem. If f is analytic, then this is zero, the left side is zero, and so too is the right. Here's Cauchy's integral formula from standard complex variable theory. C is a closed curve in the plane. F is a function which is analytic on the curve together with its interior. The theorem says that the value of the function at a point interior to the curve, z naught here, can be recovered from values of the function on the curve by performing this integration. Let's see what the generalization to Rm is. I'll start with a bounded open set in Rm, not a general manifold, that takes more mathematics. I have a function f, which is analytic on M and continuous on M together with its boundary, then I can recover the value of the function at a point 
in the manifold by integrating F around the boundary of the manifold. I sub M is the unit pseudoscalar of G M. Omega sub M is the surface area of the boundary of the unit ball in R M. When M is 2, that boundary is the circumference of the unit circle, and uh, we have 2 pi here. Once the theorem is established, very many theorems from standard complex variable theory generalize. The key fact about an analytic function is that its values uh, on, the, on a manifold can be obtained from its values on the boundary of the manifold.